Now, yesterday, Chancellor Jeremy Hunt unveiled his spring budget, which included extending support for energy bills, help with childcare costs and a boost to pensions. Well, the Chancellor joins us now to explain more about his decisions. Morning. Lovely to have Good you here. Thank you for Welcome. coming Morning. in. Bill. Morning. Um, so, I mean, uh, Sir Keir Starmer said you're dressing up stagnation and stability, putting the country on a, on a path of managed decline. Other chancellors in recent times, Conservative chancellors, Nadim Zahawi, 63 days in office, Kwasi Kwarteng, 33 days in office, then there's you. How, how, how do we know that you've got a handle on this? Well, look, um, there's always a bit of a pantomime element to the exchanges in Parliament, but uh, what I was really saying is in the short time I've been Chancellor, I've become very optimistic about our future as a country. And um, if you look at the industries that are changing our lives, uh, like technology and the internet, in the last decade, we've become the third biggest tech economy in the world after China and America. Uh, which, we... is, which is fine, and I appreciate that. And it's, uh, um, but, but nevertheless, yesterday was a massive strike day. Uh, and so there may be these, these other industries sort of creeping in. Um, but when it comes to, we're, gonna, we're going to do childcare, we're going to do the NHS, we'll chat about that. You know, but, the, but, but people who look after our children, um, the people who look after us, we, we beat pans for them, they're on strike. These are the things that people want to talk about. Yes, absolutely. And what I wanted to say to people yesterday was, there are lots of challenges. I mean, we've just had a once in a century pandemic. We've had a terrible energy crisis caused by President Putin and Ukraine. But actually, there's a way through this. And uh, one of the things that, I mean, I'm responsible for the economy as Chancellor and businesses up and down the country are really struggling to recruit people now, a million vacancies. And I said, let's break down the barriers that stop people who want to from working. And there are lots of those. And, and I know you're going to talk about childcare, but I was thinking about mums and dads who really want to work but find childcare is just so expensive they end up staying at home. Well, let's talk about that a bit further then, because what you've announced is 30 hours of free childcare uh, for working parents. So this will cover children below the age of three. So there was that gap here, wasn't there, between maternity and then when it would start at three years old. Um, all sounds very good, except for it's not going to happen now. There is quite a gap before this comes in. Well, it's going to happen quite quickly, but this is actually the biggest increase in childcare provision. I think in my lifetime, it's a huge change. We're going to need many more nurseries, uh, many more childminders. But let's talk about speed. If you've got a one-year-old now, yeah. uh, in a year's time, by the time your child turns two, mm -hmm. 15 hours of free care will start. If you get pregnant now, by the time your, you end maternity or paternity leave, then the uh, nine-month-old offer starts. So uh, there, there, there are people that say here, we've, we've got them here, uh, saying, well, it's all, all well and good, um, uh, helping parents... Why are they helping parents of babies yet to be born, says Amy? This does nothing for parents who pay another cost equivalent to their mortgage now. And, they, and, and they, what you're talking about is essentially 2025. You say speed, but it's 2025. That's not now. It's, it's not 2025, that's when the whole process is complete. It actually starts in a year's time uh, from next April when we start the offer for two-year-olds who can't currently get it. And as I say, if you get pregnant now, by the time maternity or paternity leave ends, the offer will start to kick in. But I'll be completely honest with you, uh, Phil and Holly and your viewers, it's such a big change. We're going to need so many more nurseries. You know, we're cutting the cost of childcare by 60%. There are going to be a lot more mums and dads who say, well, if you're, if you're doing that... Why not now? Because we don't have the nurseries and the childminders there. That's a really good there. point. There are and, the nurseries. And I so mean, we, have to, we have to recruit more, we have to build up the capacity in the system. It's going to be a £6,500 reduction in cost per child. And many more parents are going to say, I'd like to do that. And that's why we have to start now expanding capacity. 5,000, um, estimated 5,000 nursery providers have closed down in the last year. I mean, anyone that's got a three-year-old will tell you, and I'm sure you know yourself, trying to get a child into your local nursery is so, so difficult. Um, Alison, she's got, she's got in touch. She said, we can't even get a nursery place. Jessica said, good news on the funding, but where are all these extra places going to come from? Because the nurseries where I live are full, full, full. I mean, there are loads and loads of people saying exactly the same thing. Well, that's why we're now going to work really closely with the industry and say, look, this is a really huge change. We're going to get rid of this 
cliff edge that happens when your child is nine months old so that uh, mums and dads who want to can stay in work mm. and we're going to we're going to change that we need to work with you because we need this big staff expansion also i mean there's absolutely been people no maybe staff is crucial to change the visa system that you did that for the construction workers maybe it's something to do in this sector also well we we are doing reforms when it comes to staff we we've looked at those um, we're also increasing the amount of money that we pay to nurseries for the free hours offer this September. So we're not hanging around, um, but we, we, we also want to be honest with people because it'd be terrible if we had a lot of people who were disappointed that they wanted to take up this offer, but they couldn't get a nursery place. So we've, we've got to be but that's, structured that, and careful that about That is how... happening. There are mm -hmm. people who are massively disappointed. And, Ho and Holly mentions the you know, sort of potential changes to the, to the visa system. We're fully aware of, you know, sort of the government's involvement with Gary Lineker and the BBC and all of that sort of stuff, um, uh, which was a mess. Uh, but at the same point, <laughs> you know, you, we have people who left this country who were highly qualified and vital to the, to the workforce, whether that happened to be in childcare Care, nurseries, whether it happened to be in any of our public services, whether it was in the NHS, whether it was nurses or doctors, all of those people. Why can't you get them back if we don't quickly have enough? It takes a long time to train people up. There are people out there who could come in. Well, you are absolutely right to ask that question. And I have to say to people, there's a million vacancies up and down the country at the moment. That's not something a Chancellor can solve overnight but what I did yesterday was show people a roadmap as to how we're going to fill all those vacancies by how long breaking the road well I hope it won't be too long Phil but by we, we're going to break down the barriers for example we have two and a half million people who are long-term sick and disabled not in work many of them would like to work now, the world has changed in the last few years. There are lots of jobs you can do from home uh, on using Teams or, or Zoom um, and using a computer. And we think that many of those people would like to work and we can make it possible. So I introduced yesterday a, a voluntary scheme where we're going to spend about £4,000 a person to help them find a job they can do. And I think for many people that will be really welcome. So yesterday was a roadmap that says... We know there are all these shortages, not just uh, childminders, but yeah. right the way across the economy in the local pub, a restaurant that says it can only open uh, six nights a week. We know that's a problem, and I wanted to show people how we're going to tackle it. Can we talk about um, pensions as well? Because this is the cap on the amount that workers can accumulate in pension savings over their lifetime before having to pay extra tax, currently at 1.7 million. That will be abolished. This has kind of been seen as a way of making the rich... Richard, this is the bankers and the barristers and people that already have a lot of money in their pockets have now suddenly found themselves with more. There's people this morning that have been saying to us, you know, how can this be possible when at the other end of the spectrum you've got nurses who do the most important jobs in the world that are relying on food banks to feed their children? Well, it's, it's not that. And by the way, let me tell you what we're doing for people at the other end of the spectrum. Over £3,000 of help on average per household this year and last with energy bills and other cost of living measures. So we absolutely want to be a government that helps people who need it. But bankers all those, yeah, are but all, get that as well. Well, let me answer uh, Holly's question, if I may. All those people mm. use the NHS. And at the moment we have four in ten doctors saying they're thinking of leaving. Uh, the Royal College of Surgeons say that 69% of their members have reduced their hours because of pension arrangements. Mm. I was Health Secretary for a long time. We need our NHS more than ever. We've got 7 million people waiting for an operation. The British Medical Association, who you may know have not always been my biggest fans over the years, uh, they say this is going to stop the problem of doctors leaving because of pension arrangements. And so well, that's why we're doing it. But people, well, are, but, but, no, I'm, uh, people are on strike now, yesterday, today, next week. What are you going to do to get them... And this is all well and good, stopping doctors from leaving, because you know, it's a ripple-down effect. We get that. But it's, it's, the, it's the doctors and nurses, um, specifically, you know, sort of the junior staff or nurses who are on strike because they, as Holly said, they're having to go to food banks. So, where are your negotiations? Why can't you get them back to work? Well, we are having negotiations now. I think they're actually going quite well, and I hope we'll hear something fairly soon. In what way? Soon. How do you well, mean how well? The, 
the discussions with the unions are going well. Um, do, you have, do you think you'll have an announcement? Well, I think you'll have to wait because they haven't concluded, but I'm hopeful that we will have an agreement. What, what I would say is we have been very flexible. We've, inc we've offered more money than was on the table after the independent review process was completed last year. The only thing we've said is we don't want to do an offer that means inflation gets entrenched and we're having the same argument next year. We have to bring down inflation. That's one of the Prime Minister's key priorities. But I think the discussions uh, have been encouraging. So let's see what happens. But if you're saying, as Chancellor, am I prepared to be flexible to try and bring these disputes to the end? Yes, I am. Mm, that's good to hear. Um, the charities... Um and health experts have expressed dismay that you didn't acknowledge the NHS workforce crisis in your budget. And I just wondered what you had to say to that and what the, the hold-up was there. Well, we've just been talking about yeah. a very big measure that's going that the British Medical Association say will help keep doctors in the NHS. Um, but in the autumn statement, uh, I said that we needed to have a, a long-term workforce plan for the NHS to make sure we're training enough doctors and nurses for the future. That has been making excellent progress. I'm hoping that we'll be able to publish that mm. very soon. Um, and that's something I campaigned for for a long time before I was Chancellor, because mm. having been Health Secretary, I thought the biggest single thing that's missing in our approach to health is uh, a proper rigorous assessment of how many doctors we should be training for the future, and that's something we want to put right. Just uh, I mean, looking at the, the, the bigger picture, I mean, you inherited something of a catastrophe when you came in, sort of created for you. Um, as you look at it now in your office, I mean, you're training for the marathon, you said you're you know, thinking about doing <laughs> that, you've obviously got a lot of time to think whilst you're doing that. What state... We're looking at a couple of banks that look a bit dodgy, people are beginning to worry about you know, another 2008, there are big pictures, there's a war in Ukraine. Um, you know, these are massive global issues. Do you feel confident when you're doing your run and you're training for the marathon, what are you thinking? Are you thinking I can, we can get out of this, that there is positivity, and how long will it be? Well, the first thing I'd say, Phil, is that I am very conscious that there are a lot of people in a great deal of distress who are struggling to pay energy bills, um, who are finding day-to-day -day life very hard because of, you know, the cost of the weekly shop has gone up and so on. And I think we should always stand ready to give all the help we can. But if you're... My kids are 8, 10 and 12 and, and they'll be cheering me on when I do the marathon. It's a probably a slightly mad thing to do as a 56-year-old, but I'm, I'm doing it to raise money for my local hospital. And um, when I think about the future, and that is what I think about, and when I think about their future, I am actually very optimistic. And the reason I'm optimistic is that I look at the last 15 years and we've had really tough challenges. We had, you know, it seems a long time ago, but we had the worst financial crisis since the Second World War. We've had the energy crisis. We've had a pandemic. And yet, how's Britain done? Uh, economically, we've grown faster than Japan or France, about the same rate as Europe's largest economy, Germany. And we've got this tremendous potential. I mean. In the pandemic, it was a horrible time, but I was so proud that this country provided the world with one of the two big vaccines, yeah. saved six million lives yeah. around the world. Absolutely brilliant. And so I am really proud of what we're capable Just of one, as a country. One final thing, it popped through on the phone this morning, um, that, uh, that it is uh, alleged that TikTok will be banned off all government devices. Does that put the end of your coffee cup stuff? Um, I, um, I actually took TikTok off my own phone a while ago. Were you, um, were you told uh, to do that? Uh, no, no, I, <laughs> I, I decided to do it. But um, I, I, I've read the story this morning that all government ministers are going to be asked to. Um, but um, I have to say that it was, it was difficult taking it off because it is so addictive. <laughs> um, and uh, some of those, those videos are very clever. But we have to think about security concerns. Yeah, did your, um, your kids came to watch you yesterday while you were delivering the budget? They did. And uh, for my daughter, it was actually her first time ever in Parliament. I said, what did you make of yeah, it? Yeah, what she did said, you say? She said, Daddy, it was a pantomime, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes wow. kids Many have said the same before. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank, thank you for coming you very much. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Right.